friends, my name is Mackenzie, also known as M to the Third, and this is the M to the Third Knitting Podcast. I believe this is episode 34, and yeah, I've got a little bit of things to talk about at the beginning, then I'm going to jump into knitting, the FOs, works in progress, some future knitting plans, and then at the end I'm going to give you a little sneak peek of this month's shop update, which is going to be happening in a couple weeks from now. So thank you for joining me as always, and um, yeah, let's let's get into it. Um, so the last time that we spoke, I was talking about the Rose City Yarn Crawl, which was happening here in Portland, Oregon. Um, that was now not this last weekend, but the weekend before that. Um, I was working at a local yarn store, sort of helping everyone out. And then on that Sunday, I did a trunk show where I brought my yarn and stickers and project bags. And I met a good handful of you, um, checking in or just, you know, around. So thank you so much for saying hi. It was really, really nice even though I couldn't like totally see your face <laughs> it was really nice to just like have that in-person connection because this podcast and my channel has really grown like through the pandemic so like so many of you I haven't been to any knitting events since I don't know I've gotten more viewers so it was very cool to have a bunch of people just like I watch your show and um yeah, so thank you for saying hi. It was really nice connecting with you when I had the chance. And um, please don't be shy if you, um, you know, even if in person it's not like on you to um, maybe come up and introduce yourself. Like you can always message me, like direct message me and just be like, I was shy and I wanted to say hi and whatever because um, yeah, I always want to connect and I, a couple of people did that and I, totally feel you and it was just really nice to know that you were there and we were there together so yeah um so that went super well I had a ton of fun my yarn stores are a little depleted which is quite a blessing um so yeah I'll talk a little bit more about what I have planned for the shop update later this month um and uh yeah that's that um, so the first thing I want to mention is my current outfit. I'm going to talk more about this York pullover, but I made this as well as my sweater, and you'll see these massive contrast patches. So, um, this sweater is one that I, I don't love to say designed because I didn't grade it or anything. I just, I just did it, um, improv sweater. It has kind of like a waffle stitch. It's out out of um, Brooklyn Tweed Shelter in the color Hayloft, which I just adore. Um, and frankly, you know, Brooklyn Tweed Shelter can be a little dicey just because of the way that it is constructed. It is just not as strong. And so one of the ways to kind of counteract that and the wear that it will face is to knit it at a very tight gauge. When I knit this sweater, I don't know, I knit it very loose, at a very loose gauge, so I think that was not a good call with this yarn. So I've got massive holes here, there's one down in here somewhere on the sleeve, and there's a ton of little holes that I'm slowly patching up, but um, yeah, so let's just say lesson learned, but so I added all these contrast patches, um, like knitted on, and I sort of repeated the stitch pattern and then also um, did some needle felting. I've talked about patching this sweater in the past but the patches weren't um, making me very happy so I actually ripped some of them out and blah 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 blah. So yeah that's what I'm wearing today with my little York pinafore um, and yeah I just wanted to mention that because I usually don't. I forget to do that. I also Realize I hadn't mentioned this in a couple of podcast episodes, um, so I wanted to make sure to mention it now. Um, I have a Slack channel for viewers of this podcast. Um, I always post the link down in the description to sign up, so you can click that and join. Um, it's a pretty, pretty awesome community. It's about, I don't know, there's like 130 members. Not all of them are active. Um, right now we are deep in the Wordle 
like sharing our scores every morning. It's very cute. And um, along with just sharing finished objects and works in progress and asking questions, we also have two virtual knit hangouts every month. So the first one is just a general knit hangout. It's usually the second Friday of every month in the evening um, Pacific time. Um, so all of the details to that and the links to join are in the Slack group. And then we also do um, a like handmade wardrobe support group. We just started that at the beginning of the year. I think we've met twice now. Um, so it's just a little bit more focused and more like uh, just sort of focusing our discussion on making your own clothes. And that has been really amazing. I'm enjoying it so much and I think other folks are too. That is definitely why I um, ended up making this this month, um, making my this little pinafore. So um, if that's something that interests you, then definitely click the link down below. Um, you're definitely not obligated to, you know, there's no obligation, I guess, in joining if you just want to like take a look at what's going on over there. And we have, yeah, those knit nights. So if you'd like to join us, then definitely hit that link, sign up and come get some more info. Um, and then the last sort of piece of uh, news that I wanted to mention is that I'm hosting a year long knit along that is very loosey goosey with the rules, but really, really fun. So um, it is the hashtag end of the third sock stash along um, 2022. And basically the idea behind this was that I wanted to replenish my sock drawer since a lot of my socks have finally worn out and flew the coop. <laughs> and so I decided to take all of the sock yarn out of my stash, wrap them into cute little parcels, and then um, put them on my shelf. And so every month I pick one out, unwrap a new to me new to my memory <laughs> skein and get to knitting. So um, I am now on my third pair for the year. I'm doing them two at a time. I'll share that in a sec. Um, but how to participate is basically just posting on Instagram. Um, every public post with the hashtag M3 Sockstash Along 2022 gets an entry into the raffle for the month. And Lindsay of Larkspur Knits very generously donated 12 sock patterns. So um, when you participate, you get an entry and then you could enter into the raffle to get a free sock pattern. And if you make a reel, you get two entries for that post. Um, just make sure to include the hashtag so that I can see it. If your profile is not public, you can share a screenshot um, with me and I will enter you into the raffle as well. So you don't have to have a public profile, but I will not see it unless it is public um, or I'm following you. So anyway, um, yeah, there's a bunch of people participating. There's a bunch of really fun posts. Also, I'm getting so many sock patterns. Um, I tend to knit vanilla socks, but I'm trying to branch out um, just to add a little bit of texture. I have knit like cabled socks in the past and they're just like, it's so tiny. It's not my favorite thing to do because they are sort of my to-go pattern. So something with like a simple chart repeat is more my jam. So um, I did want to mention this additions to um, my little bundle, which is that I've had a couple sock books that a lot of sock patterns I'm not going to knit again um, because I have got my like sock pattern down. I think a lot of pretty avid sock knitters do. Um, so I actually cut the pages with the pattern information out of the book of the ones that I would want to knit. I recycled the rest of the book and I folded them up and put them with um, my sock uh, stash of little gifties. So um, I'm going to pick a skein out for April and depending on what it is I've got a few patterns that um, might correspond really well so yeah I'll definitely keep you updated on that um, if you don't already follow me on Instagram which is at m to the third um, do that because I'm sort of posting more frequent updates there and yeah that's what's going on and so I guess that can actually start us off with whips so 
Um, let me show you. It'll be an FO and a whip related to the sock along. So um, the last time we spoke, I was a little more than halfway done with a pair of um, socks from these this Mad Fuzzy skein set. I have like wax poetic about um, about this yarn at this point many times. So you can go um, check out last. <laughs> you can go check out the last podcast episode if you want to learn more about them, but um, this is how they turned out. So I very nearly ran out of yarn. I had finished this sock, and so I had 200... wait, I'm sorry. I had one three skein set. Each skein was 50 grams, so I had 150 um, grams in total. So I was pretty sure I could get four socks out of it, but um, depending on the pattern that I chose, I wasn't sure, you know, I was like, I could run out, we'll see. So I did that first pair, and then I started these, and this was the first one that I did. Um, I did, when I switched between the skeins, I did this little like slip, knit one, slip one, um, just to give it some more interest, and I did a partridge heel that called? I think it's partridge heel. Um, just also for something different. I like doing that garter ridge on the heel flap as well just because it makes it a little easier to pick up. So I finished one and I looked at the yarn that I had and I was like, I'm cutting this close. <laughs> I could tell I was cutting it close. So what I did to make sure that I had enough yarn was I weighed the sock and then I weighed the three little balls of yarn and I did have enough in total to finish the second sock um, and with with some grams to um, spare but I was pretty sure I was gonna run out of something so kind of amazingly I did not run out of this dark darker color um, I made it all the way to the bottom here where I needed to be but I did run out of the light teal, but I made it pretty, pretty dang far. So I'm not mad that just like this little tiny bit is um, not in pattern. And um, yeah, so these ones are 4K. I did it to their foot size, um, which is a little smaller than mine. Um, they really like them. And now that I have shown them to you, they will get to wear them. Um, this yarn, again, just gonna wax poetic about it. So warm, so durable, very, very into it. So um, yeah, so that was February sock, finished just in time. And then I picked my next skein um, for March and I picked another skein that was designated for K. So they're making out like a bandit to begin. Let me grab those. And I decided, to do them two at a time just for fun um, but it is this skein okay let me show you so it is this yarn from um, Knit Picks it was one 100 gram skein I divided it into two balls so that I could knit them two at a time um, the skein is really was all white and then has this like section that was like all of the rainbow colors. Hopefully I took a picture of that. If so, I'll include it. Um, it's their yarn called Hawthorne. I think it was like an exclusive colorway. I don't really, I know that Knit Pick sort of like cycles through colorways and I bought this several years ago. Um, but the way that it is pooling is just so cool. So I'm doing them both at the same time and it's like pooling across both of them on either <laughs> in either direction so it's very very fun <clears throat> and the pattern that I'm using since I said I'm experimenting with some patterns is uh, Susan from Knit Lib her pattern called Norther um, which is mostly purling <laughs> which I should have known by looking at them but um, yeah so it's taken it's taken a bit, but this is what I take to knit night at the store I work at. Um, just my whatever sock project I'm working on. So they will, they will get done. We're only like we're just entering the second week of March, so I'm not worried about not finishing them at this point. 
but again, that's for K. And this is in my little knitters um, project bag that I illustrated and sewed. So yeah, that's a cute, that's a cute project that has been keeping me going. Um, yeah, I'm just thoroughly enjoying the sock along and it's definitely keeping my motivation up to keep going with it. I'm just really enjoying seeing everyone's progress and um, sharing my own. So definitely head over to Instagram. There's more details over there and uh, I hope that you'll participate even though um, I know it's not, I, I, I've had held holdups about joining year long knit alongs when it is not the beginning of the year, but I promise like I'm not even telling everyone to make 12 socks. It's very loosey goosey. So in whatever capacity, if you want a community of sock knitters, you should definitely um, follow the hashtag and just kind of see what everyone's doing because it's pretty fun. So yeah. Okay. Let me, okay. I have a couple other FOs, one of which is this York pinafore, which I'm going to take some other video of so that you can see it in its full glory. Um, this is a pattern from Helen's Closet. I will include um, the max hip and bust measurements that the pattern says here. Um, I will say that since I, I've made this before, um, it's a pretty quick sew. It's um, very beginner friendly. I have since making it the first time, um, sized out of the size chart. Um, and so what I did was I just added, um, an inch at each side seam. I could definitely have afforded to add a little bit more even. Um, but it was a very like truly easy adjustment to make. Um, you just basically follow the line out however much extra and then follow and then add that extra all down the side seam. Um, and yeah, so no, we should not have to, um, adjust and patterns should come in all sizes, but that's not the reality. And I'm telling you that if you feel like you need more ease in the hips, you can easily do it. Um, and if you have questions, leave a comment down below, but I'll link everything um, as usual in the description and yeah so the fabric that I used I had this very funny um, day with Kay uh, so sort of during the hubbub after the 2016 election um, and then sort of in conjunction with the Women's March ish um, there was an exhibit put on at a quilting museum in Lowell Massachusetts and Kay and I wanted to go and so we like drove up. It was about an, it's about an hour outside of Boston. Um, I'd never been to the quilt museum anyway and, it, and my interest for being in Boston were um, textiles and archives. So we decided that it was a good opportunity to go up um, and we drove up and we got there and we had lunch and the quilt museum was closed. <laughs> And we were like, oh no. And it said it was open. It was like a fluke sort of that it was closed. So we like walked up and we were like disappointed and um, we're headed back to our car and someone busts out of the doors and is like, are you here to see the exhibit? And we were like, yes. And she was like, okay, just come in. Eat. Like we're technically closed today, but you can come in because it's about to close. So we ended up going to the quilt museum and she had let a couple other people in, but it was basically like the museum was closed and we got to peruse. I do remember enjoying it. I also remember just being like, okay, there's a lot of pussy hats represented. And, um, you know, it was, I'm glad that we went. The rest of the museum was very cool. Um, if you are in the Massachusetts area, I'd highly recommend checking it out. Um, but as we were leaving, we went to the little gift shop. Um, they opened up the register for just the people that they had let in. And um, they had given us like free admission to everything. Um, so we were like, okay, let's like buy some little tchotchkes. And um, I saw that they had this like area where people can donate basically cuts of fabric that they weren't gonna use. Um, 
and then the quilt museum would resell it. Um, so there was like this whole area of like re resale fabric. Um, so I found this yardage there and it's like two and a half yards. It definitely feels like wool. I haven't tested it. Um, I haven't tested it, but I can sort of tell by the feel that I'm pretty sure it's wool, if not a wool blend. Um, it has these like orange flecks in it and I just was really drawn to it. And um, I was like, oh, how much is this? And she was like, oh, a dollar. And I did find as I was cutting this out to make this a little price tag on it that said a dollar. And I was like, uh, okay. <laughs> so had this in my stash since then, which thinking about it is now like five years ago. Um, and my intention was to make one of these. So I, yeah, I pulled that out. I cut it. I even pieced the whole pattern together because a lot of my patterns I got rid of during the move. Um, and I put it together in like two days and yeah, I've been wearing it a lot. I think it's like a really good neutral staple for me. And, um, yeah, so I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. So that's the little story of this, um, great pattern aside from, you know, not the best size range. And yeah, if you've been wanting to make one, I'd highly encourage you to do it. My other finished object, um, I have to thank Grace, my friend Grace Rother for, because she knit one of these, I don't know, I think a little bit ago. And it is the um, Elizabeth Zimmerman, oh, that does not do, this is more accurate to the color. Um, it blows out a little bit if I put it too close to the light. Um, it's Elizabeth Zimmerman's swirl hat. It's done with pretty chunky um, yarn and it sort of looks like a little gnome hat or a little ice cream. <laughs> um, and I had bought this yarn from Ritual Dyes the first time that I visited and I just love sort of the like glowing orangey red color and I needed a really bright hat for when I'm walking maple at night because it's very dark and yeah so I just knew that I wanted something kind of bright so I made this like silly hat and it makes me feel like I live in a Phoebe Wall illustration but I really like her and this is usually the hat I wear at night when I'm walking maple <laughs> and then sometimes it like slides up a little bit depending on like if I have a scarf on Ooh, and it got caught in a bookie pin and it, then it like really looks like a little little forest gnome <laughs> yeah I I love it so um this is with ritual dyes I think it's the base is elder and I double I held it double so it's like I mean she's chunky it's like a ten and a half needle or ten needle um, and the Elizabeth Zimmerman pattern is like a paragraph out of one of her little, um, you know, one of her little booklets. So yeah, but I'm really happy with how that turned out and it's definitely entered into my rotation. So yeah, just wanted to mention that little guy. Okay, so now on to whips. Um, I have talked a lot about my Cory confetti sweater that I am designing and, um, you may have seen a couple of days ago on Instagram, I posted about ripping back a bunch of it. Um, so basically, I, I had talked about this. I can't totally remember everything, but I'm pretty sure what I said was that I wasn't happy with the amount of ease. So it's basically the body was my upper bust measurement and it went all the way down to my hips, which are a very different measurement. I thought that it would be okay because of um, I'm doing kind of like a split hem moment, but it was it wasn't there wasn't as much ease as I wanted worked into the body. <laughs> so I I had practiced the hem, and I'm really happy with how it looks. I need to make some adjustments to the shaping anyway, and so I just, you know, I ripped it, I ripped it back to just under the armpit. 
Um, and I also, I think, I think that the last time we talked, I talked about ripping out the sleeve. So I did work on the sleeve again, adjust the gauge. So anyway, it's sort of just like a, it's just going to be a long standing whip. I really hope that when it's done, I'm freaking stoked about it, but also LOL, same color as me. Um, so yeah, she's, she's there. Progress is being made. Maybe not as much as I would like, but it's happening. So <laughs> that's one whip. The other whip I cast on, um, so I really did during the Rose City Yarn Crawl not try to go overboard with buying stuff, and I think I did a pretty good job. Uh, one of the things that I really wanted was this little DK mini skein set that was dyed custom for the store. Um, it looks like this. This is my little picture I took of it before I wound up the skeins. I think it's so pretty pastel -y. and um, I have another baby arriving in my life um, and I'm going to their baby shower next month so I wanted to make a little little something something because you all know I love making baby things um, so I picked up that little mini bundle and just wanted to make a little newborn sweater um, in a fade so this is where we're at it's very cute so yeah all I need to do is add um, is add the sleeves and add some buttons and we're going to be pretty good to go. But isn't it cute? I love the way the colors are working. It looks very much like a water painting. Um, water painting, watercolor painting. So yeah, that's almost done. And really I was like, I know I need to do that. Um, and so there was some yarn that I ordered to finish something else that I bought at Yarn Crawl. I'll explain this in a second, but, um, so I sort of have been trying to whip it out, um, taking a break from socks and, um, before casting on anything new. So now I want to talk to you a little bit about plans and some musings I have had on the subject. So, <clears throat> so I sort of talked about this. I think I showed you my cute little journal, um, last month because I've been keeping track of finished objects, but also my sort of whip cue. So I, as I have finished things, I've been sort of marking them off as done. Um, and then, so I sort of have this like record of things that are in progress that I need to complete and, um, plans that I have coming up. So <clears throat> I sort of had this funny moment where I was like, you know, just as someone who does this podcast and who has other people very involved, I guess, in my like making it's sort of funny, or I guess I feel a little bit of shame or self-consciousness when I don't finish something that I talk about and was excited about. Um, a good example of this, if you remember from um, this episode, I made this like scrap sock tube idea where I was doing like helical knitting. And at that time, that felt like such a good idea. I do still like the idea, but I wasn't getting any joy out of knitting it. And yeah, I just was sort of like, where's this going to go? <laughs> so I actually took it off of the needles. I cut the working yarn off. I still have those scrap balls that perhaps I will do something with at some point. Um, and I just, I tossed it. I let it go. <laughs> And, you know, it's sort of a funny thing to even talk about planning something because occasionally it just doesn't, doesn't come to fruition. Whether the yarn I initially thought that I was going to use, um, I realize isn't going to work or, you know, there's so many reasons why something doesn't want to come into existence. 
I keep knitting fingering weight sweaters that I just sort of am like, oh, <laughs> you know, it's a lot more work than I thought, um, or I thought I wanted to do it, and then my attentions change. Like, there's so many reasons why I want to make specific patterns, and if it's not the actual, like, um, making of it isn't bringing me joy, then I'm very happy to let things go. So, but then there's like this added level of complexity that I'm sharing it with people and almost like, it almost feels like contractual that I'm like, this is what I'm going to do with this and I'm so excited about it and blah, blah, blah. I know that, so as I was sort of planning for this episode and just thinking about what I wanted to talk about, one of the things was some plans that I have coming up and I was like, well, I've already like, not followed through with some other plans that I have shared. I have whips that I haven't touched and, you know, and I was like, why am I feeling funny about like sharing plans? Um, and why would I avoid that? And I think it's just because there's like sort of this way of productivity that, you know, being creative, um, sometimes like that type of productivity just like stunts it. And I think that it's actually very powerful to be like, this isn't serving me. This seemed like a really great idea, but I actually don't want to finish this or I don't even want to start it or this yarn would be better served somewhere else, you know, whatever it is. And um, yeah, so I just, I wanted to sort of make note of that because I was feeling um, self-conscious about sharing these plans just because I knew I hadn't finished what I had said. I was, you know, whatever. There have been instances where I've talked about something and then not finished them. But, you know, sometimes the planning is joyful, a joyful part of making, and I sort of wanted to also document that. And even if I don't get to it now or whatever, um, it doesn't mean that it's never going to happen. There are things that I have planned out that I get to years later, you know, whatever. So I just kind of wanted to note that because I had that moment of like weird feeling and um, I'm sure that other people also feel that or maybe they just like struggle through knitting something that they don't want to be knitting and we can do better for ourselves. <laughs> so just wanted to mention that. Um, so these are my plans um, of, there's like three sweaters that I am really feeling right now. And I sort of drew them out and then I'm going to talk about them and show you the yarn. So the first is so the first thing that I want to say is that I deeply love Orville Peck. If you have not listened to Orville Peck and his music, um, I highly recommend it. He is like a gay cowboy crooner. I don't even know. He's just amazing. He has a song with Shania Twain. I mean, just impeccable. So um, he's been high on my list maybe number one in a way that I haven't felt in a long time to see live because his, the way he performs, I can just tell. I can just tell. It's going to be amazing. So he posted, he has a new album coming out. Um, he already released half of it. The second half I believe was coming out maybe the day that this is posted. And so he's going on tour and I haven't seen live music like many of us in over two years and he's coming to Portland. So I was like, well, I've never wanted to go see someone live more than I want to go see him. I've been saying that for basically since I learned about him. Um, so Kay and I are going to go in June to see Orville. I could not be more thrilled. I'm already looking for cowboy hats. Okay. So I have had this vintage knitting pattern book for a long time. It is technically a children's book. I may have mentioned it before on the podcast, but it's just this little booklet. Funny enough, it was published 
in um, Boston, and it is from 1951. And <clears throat> there's one sweater in particular that I just adore. It's basically a Western shirt turned into a little cardigan. It's all intarsia. It's all knit flat and seamed because that's just what people did. And so my goal has been to turn that from like a kid's size into a my size. And um, I was like, what, what better time than for Orville? <laughs> so this is, is it going to happen? I don't know. Is it stupid to knit a sweater for a concert that's happening in June? Yes. But like, you know, so anyway, this has been on my like future knit plans for a long time and um, this might just be the like fire I need to make it happen. So I've been thinking about colors a little bit. I've got this beautiful, I've got like a sweater quantity of this from Modus Operandi Fibers, now called Mo Fibers, um, naturally dyed. And I thought if I held this double that I could maybe make like a DK weight. And then I have this DK weight and this fingering weight. So just, just hear me out for a sec. So this for the body, this for the contrast, and then this for the flowers and the leaves. It's a little gaudy, but I mean, go look up Orville Peck and tell me that that wouldn't be appropriate. So I don't know. We'll see. I definitely could make some changes, but that's kind of what I'm, you know, envisioning. So that is one of my, even if I'm just dreaming about it, I'm not mad about that. <laughs> so that's number one. Number two is from the latest issue of Pom Pom. This issue is just completely stunning. Highly recommend. Shout out to Amy who has this beautiful sweater on the cover. Um, yeah, it's just a lot of friends in here and just, it's just freaking stunning. I don't know what to say. But the one that immediately caught my eye that I have been dreaming of is this. Oh no, this is not a great picture. Okay. But if you follow Pom Pom, you'll have seen it. It is this like mohair peplum moment. There is a dress version and um, I have already been bullied into considering it for like a wedding dress, which I don't know if we'll get there, but so that's what it looks like. So I, I'm like head over heels with that um, design and I have yarn that could work with it. So I've got this ritual dies. So the stripes, can you, can you please, can we have a moment of that? Is it focusing? I don't know. There we go. Um, so gorgeous. I just want to wear that. And I've got yellow pants that are like this color, maybe even brighter, like for the spring. Oh. So anyway, it's knit on like ten and a half needles. I think I will probably need to make that happen pretty quick. But the one that is like next in the queue that the second I cast off that baby sweater, I'm going to cast on is an idea I have for a Felix cardigan. I don't think I have to mention the Felix. I'm sure you've seen it. Other podcasters, it's a very, very popular pattern. Um, but I also don't totally want to hype it up too much because it's not very size inclusive. I am at the top of their size range with zero ease. So, um, yeah, it's, it's just, just just how it is. What I'm going to do is I'm going to knit the top part and then um, I'm going to, similar to the sweater that I just ripped out, do some A-line shaping so that I have some ease in like the hips. Um, but it's a very, very simple pattern and um, I'm going to spice it up 
just a wee bit. So I got, this was the other um, splurge that I did at Yarn Crawl. Um, I got some Cory Worsted from La Vienne, so I'm just knitting with a lot of this Cory Worsted. Got these two colors, and my plan at the moment is to basically do a split cardigan version of the Felix. So it will be split like at the back center. Um, half of it will be this beautiful like fuchsia color. And the other half will be this kind of like purpley gray. But I'm gonna hold this side double with some black mohair. So there will be color differences on one side as well as textural differences. So that I already swatched for. I'm gonna cast on immediately. And I was like, I feel funny like focusing on that instead of like the Cory sweater or, you know, whatever. This was another one of my little self-conscious moments, but I really want like a quote unquote instant gratification project for myself to wear. And this felt like a really good option for that. So that's what I'm gonna do. Um, yeah, I'll keep you updated on that, but I'm really excited about it. I sort of, when I know something is gonna like work really well in my wardrobe, when I know I can style it in a lot of different ways, I get very excited and this one really feels like a good moment. I'm excited. Can you tell? Um, I might add some pockets. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. I'm not going to get too ahead of myself. So, um, yeah, that's my motivation to finish up the baby thing. And I'll make sure to take photos of it um, in case the next time I get to record, I don't have it with me because it has been gifted. And yeah, I think that's, that's kind of it for that. So let me make a quick transition into just some of the things that are going to be available in the shop update later this month. Um, the first, so I want to mention that I'm going to try, I have done this in the past, but I don't do it consistently where I do pre-orders. Um, so I have a new sticker sheet that began as a question box on Instagram story. I posted this question box and asked what your favorite springtime activities were. I got a ton of responses. Of course there were specific flowers, um, a lot of gardening things, bike rides. So I made this very adorable sticker sheet, which I will put here. Um, and I'm doing pre-orders for it. So all of the sticker sheets that I put out are six dollars. They ship free within the U.S. and they're just $1.20 to ship internationally, although that's going to probably go up like 10 cents soon when I have to buy a new batch of forever, um, forever stamps, international forever stamps. But um, for now, it's $1.20. So if you like what you see, then you should definitely head over to my website, again, link in bio, um, to order one. It'll probably ship the first week of April. And yeah, so if you like that, definitely head over and order one, um, just like a little treat for yourself. And all of the pre-orders are going to get an extra little sticker goodie. So that's a little incentive for that. The next thing that I'm going to have available for pre-order are little sock sets for to make yourself one of these. So this is a little pattern I put together. I love the way the stripes have worked up. These are in the colors Hugo, Mesa, and then Lisinas. Um, and so I'm gonna be doing this as well as a couple different colorways. And with it, you'll get a little project bag, you'll get the pattern, and you'll get three um, like of the M to the third sock minis. Um, thank you all so much for your orders in the last update. I was so excited to present you with M to the third sock and you all were very excited about it too. It looks like you're all really enjoying knitting with it and I can't wait to see 
the patterns that you do. So I had this idea to do this fun stripe sort of sequence. Um, so stay tuned for more info on that. If you want updates on when those are going to be available, etc., um, go down and click the newsletter button to sign up. Um, and uh, yeah, you'll be the first to hear about all the updates. So, uh, you guys, like it even like, it would look so good with this outfit. So, <laughs> so this is another FO that I finished in this month, which is maybe why I didn't finish my other sock over there as quickly as I'd like to. Um, but seriously, I'm so happy with how this came out and I hope you like it too. I'm also dyeing some yarn, so there will be um, some individual skeins, so if you didn't snag any M to the third sock during that first update, um, there's a couple skeins left, but I'm going to be dyeing up more of that, and uh, yeah, so that'll be, wait, let me see what day I put, yeah, so that'll be March 25th, um, which is a Friday, and it'll probably be around noon Pacific time, so yeah. Thank you so much for watching. Um, this is kind of like a schedule that I think is really working for me. I focused a lot on YouTube last year. Um, and while I enjoyed it, my knitting podcast episodes get the most views. Um, they're the ones that it's not that the, they, they do kind of take the least amount of effort. Um, I will also be incorporating some more vlogs style stuff, but I think those will be fewer and far in between. But if you're missing me on here, definitely follow me on Instagram at m to the third. I'm having a ton of fun posting reels and, you know, just engaging with people on there as usual. So, um, yeah. But also if you want to chat sans advertisements and just a little bit more freely, head down to the link to sign up for the Slack channel. And I hope you'll join us for some knit nights. Um, yeah. Again, thank you so much for watching. And uh, I'll see you next time. Bye.